Check one, two. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check one, two. Okay, can you play that, that shit again? Whatever you were just playing? Yeah, fucking shit. Can you hand me the charger? Is this you guys at rehearsal? Yeah, I was just practicing last night. Oh. We kind of eased into this episode tonight. Yeah, man. Yeah, I like the fact that we've done that. Yeah, we, we were chilling a little bit. Sipping on some of these... Uh, Road sodas, dude. Yeah, man. These... Uh, Hypoallergenic yoo-hoos, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> High life, man. This is my dad's beer. Cause fuck Rolling Rock. Yeah, man. They stopped making that juice from that weird creek in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. We just had to go funk with that lady on the moon. But she is cute. The girl on the moon. She's, she's a cutie, dude. From, from the ro- Rolling Rock? Nay. Miller Highlight. Oh, I didn't even know. Dude, stare deep into the bottle. I think I can see my soul. When I was a young man, I'm talking young, prepubescent, that raisin lady had me feeling things. You thought the raisin lady was sexy? Yeah, absolutely. She's out there grape farming, dude, and like this... Uh, homemade Amish type shirt you know what I'm saying like yeah yeah you don't want to make any comments about the Amish community on this podcast nah man I'm not (laughs) nah man other than the fact that they're wonderful people and I respect everything that they do say and I trust their judgment completely No, I had a, like, last time I got on a podcast and started going on about the homage, my dad had a, he had to have a talk with me. Was it on the, uh, the Poptimist? It was not on the Poptimist. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I said nothing but the truth, but sometimes the truth. The truth hurts? The truth hurts, man. But, uh, do you want me to shut this jive-ass music up? Yeah, you can shut it off. Yeah. We're just warming up right now. Okay, I wasn't sure if we've, we've done begun. Do the fade out? Fade out, yeah. There we go. There it is. Fuck yeah. Uh, nice to be in this nice leather chair. Something, yeah. Some, sh- something had to die to make these chairs possible. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 100%. Danny was like, yo, do you want to wanna use these uh these chairs for the podcast? And I was like, fuck yeah. He, he told me he was going to be offended if I didn't use this space down here. Um, for anything, for the podcast, for music shit. He's like, you feel free to, to jam down there and do shit down there. And so I've just been kind of chilling, man. Man, you need to stink it up down here, man. This is, this basement's got so much potential. Well, I mean, this is just short term right now. You know what I mean? But my next place, for sure. I'm, I'm planning on fucking, I'll, I'll have the fucking... Isaac Short set design. No, but what is your vibe, though, dude? That's what I've been trying to figure out for years. Like, you know. I don't know. Because I would say, like, even if you go into my bedroom, it's pretty efficient for the most part. I noticed that. You know what I mean? Like, I I don't have a lot of stuff uh, or even, like, possessions, really. Other than, like, I have my laptop. I have my base, of course. I have your amp. And I have, um, that's, that's actually down here right now. And then I have baseball cards and that's pretty much it. And clothes and shit and just like little shit. Um, somehow it looks like less. What's that? Your possessions. My possessions. They look less than what you just listed. Yeah, it's true. (laughs) Honestly, it's true. Um, this is the first time that I've had a TV in, in my bedroom since I was a kid. Yeah. You watching, you watching TV? Um, Truthfully, no, I haven't hooked the TV up. <laughs> I'll get around to it eventually. Danny gave me the TV. I'm very so, grateful. So you're not watching X-Files? No. I do love X-Files, though, dude. Okay, okay, cool. Um, 
I've been watching Andor on uh, on Disney Plus. I'm over Star Wars, bro. Can't do it anymore. Really? Not even the Mandalorian? I did it. Did that? I watched Obi Wan Kenobi, but after Obi Wan Kenobi's, I was done. I'm, I I gotta stop. I gotta. I, I'm I'm stopping there. I'm not going on any more of these emotional journeys where they try and like. I'm just. I'm tired of watching child actors. Oh shit! Did you not like Princess Leia and Obi Wan? Not a fan. Yeah, neither was I. Yeah, no. Well, it was like the chase scene in like the first or second episode. I yeah, like, uh, yeah. Well, she was too fucking whack, uh, dude. I I hate any time that there's wise children in a show. Oh like, yeah, like all knowing children. Children don't know shit. They're dumb. You know what I mean? They don't know anything yet. They're li- they're and the. Like, they're little sociopaths, basically. No, yeah, I didn't know how to speak in a complete sentence until I was, like, 23. Yeah. <laughs> um, Dude, but how good was it? Did you watch all of Obi-Wan? Yeah, I watched all of it. What did you think of the end when they had that final fucking Obi-Wan, uh, Darth Vader showdown? I thought it was um, it was pretty cinematic. Yeah. Um, it was it was pretty, uh, yeah, my heart was beating for sure. Uh, there was one... I watched it, like, obviously, like, I, I viewed it again later, like, you know, privately watching YouTube, and I slowed some stuff down, and I observed it. Like, I still am a Star Wars fan, dude, like, yeah. don't get me wrong, but my favorite part of that whole thing was uh, whenever at the very last scene, and he meets, like, the young Luke Skywalker, and he goes, hello there. Yeah, oh, yeah, of course. I was waiting for it the entire time. I, I was, was like, too. please. Just... Yeah, it was great. I, I thought um, it was cool that they brought back Hayden Christensen. I feel like people give him too much shit. It's still sexy. It's yeah. Still sexy, dude. Bro, how great was it when he sliced that mask, the Darth Vader mask? It, it was half the time it was Hayden talking and half the time it was Vader talking. That was incredible, bro. It was a, it was a great idea. I underst- it, it wasn't incredible for me. It was incredible for me. It was incredible for a lot of people, man. Like I can't, I can't be judgy with that. But that's one of those things where Star Wars is so fucking polarizing. Um, you know, everyone has like everyone has just as many people will have one opinion as other people have the other. Opinion yeah. When it comes to anything with that, and I, I can no longer invest like the emotions required for that. But to be honest with you, man, I kind of, I kind of don't fucking care anymore. Yeah, I feel that. I'm no, I think you might not. Then that's okay, but it's like, dude, I just want to watch. Like, I got Attack of the Clones on VHS, and I've just been watching Attack of the Clones over and over again. Uh huh. That's it. <laughs> Are you still on the hunt for Revenge of the Sith? Yeah. Hey, if there's anybody out there, um, they can hook me up with a Revenge of the Sith on VHS. They didn't make too many of them, and I'd like to complete the saga in a format that I find suitable. Can you pull your microphone a little bit closer to you? Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, get, get it. Would you actually be able to turn my headphones down a little bit? Yeah, I can turn your headphones. Down. Yeah, I'm over here. I was like, it was a, it was a big mistake. I was jamming for a second, but how was that? Oh, cow's ass, man. Is that good? Yeah, I love it. Thank you. Of course. Is that, is that better for you? Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's great, man. I, I'll get close on here, man. I'll bury what your ass. Happy Halloween, Taylor Bear, man. Dude, happy Halloween to you, man. Halloween's my favorite holiday. Is it? Yeah. 100% by far, by a long shot. Oh, yeah, you got that cute little shirt on, too, man. I didn't even notice yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. My, my sister got me this shirt. Okay, yeah, so it's a, uh, what, what kind of, what do they call that type of shirt? It's a short sleeve button down. Yeah, it's it's like a Hawaiian shirt, but it's not Hawaiian. It's just black, and there's, uh like, jack-o'-lanterns all over it. I love your style, dude, because you're the only motherfucker I know that wears a hoodie and then puts a shirt like that over top the hoodie. Thanks, man. <laughs> that's unique. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Well, I'm wearing a Twin Peaks hoodie, David Lynch. Oh. Oh, I thought you meant like the- uh, the, the ho- restaurant? The Hooters, yeah. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> I, I do like Twin Peaks, the restaurant as well. Yeah. Well, you know, like breasts. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm a fan of breasts. Yeah. Um, Dude, you want to make some fucking phone calls? Oh, boy. What's up, motherfucker? Dude, it's great to hear your voice. How you doing? I'm doing good. How you doing, bro? Man, um, uh, well, actually, like, I was just kind of, um, you got, you got a second to talk, brother? Yeah, I got a minute. Okay, okay, okay. Um, well, man, I was just thinking about that time, you know, um, you know, when we were at D's doing that music video thing? Yeah. Well, I don't know. This is kind of this is kind of a long shot, man. It's like it's either this or I'm gonna leave town. So, like, I just I just I just need to be straight with you. So, like, 
I don't know, like, I felt like we had, like, a real vibe that night, and we were kind of, like, you know, we were kind of, like, connecting in a way, like, just, like, just laughing and shit and chilling, and, um, mm-hmm. well, I mean, I, it's been really hard for me, man, but, like, I'm just, I'm, you know, I, 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 dump, I dumped Gabrielle this morning, and I'm just, I'm done with this shit, man. I just wanted to know if you wanted to go, like, if I could buy you, like, some flowers and go out and get a drink or something. Oh, shit, bro. Um... Like I'm, Man. I'm, I'm being a hundred percent serious, and it's like it needs to take it or leave it. Do what? It's it. it, it I said I'm being a hundred percent serious too, dude. It's, it's like it's like take it or leave it. I, like I, th- I think you just cute, cute as hell, dude. <laughs> Man, I appreciate it, but yeah, that's not my vibe. Damn, man, I really thought I was about to fall in love. <laughs> Dude, dude, seriously, man. Like, I'm, I'm out, I'm out, then, man. Like, it was kind of like it was, it was a hope and a prayer, and I, I, I wasn't sure if you'd go for it, man. You know, like, you just keep, you just keep on playing that, playing that banjo. Well, I appreciate it, bro. Uh, man, if you ever need anything, fucking, you know, are you like for real about to skip town? Oh yeah, yeah, man. Well, I just like, I was. I was just kind of catching like a certain, a, a, like a like a certain feeling, you know, and I just, uh, I, I, I had, I kind of had to act on it, man. It's been, it's been all about you this entire time, and um, I'm just, you know, I just, I've just had about enough, so it's, it's time for me to leave. Well, man, uh, I, I apologize, but yeah, that's not, that's not really my vibe. That's, um, a, that's okay. But I'm down to jam. Tristan, you're on the Optimist right now, bud. What? <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> you motherfuckers. Happy Halloween, bud. Hey, were you serious? Yeah, like, you're you're on the podcast. Town? <laughs> nah, dude. <laughs> no, no, but but but, but but if you ever if you ever do want me to buy you flowers and have like you know a passionate affair, bro, like I will fuck you up. <laughs> <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> Tristan, who That's else? Funny. Who else should we call, bro? Uh, have you already called Millhouse? No, no. Honestly, do you want to do this in Millhouse? Same, with the same, same, same goof, bit, yeah. same goof. <laughs> okay, do it, do it, please do okay. it. Okay. Well, Tristan, <laughs> bud, thank you, thank you so much for uh, for for joining us. Um, we're going to give Millhouse a call and see what he's up to. <laughs> you motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. All right, boys. Enjoy it. Hey, keep it real, man. I'll keep see Keep it real, Tristan. We love you, bud. <laughs> love you guys. We'll Bye. see you. He he took that surprisingly well. No, like almost he was, too, he almost was, too well. He, he was, was very gentle, dude. No, he was like, he was like man, you want jam? <laughs> God damn! What it. was that? Who was that, bro? I think we're just gonna have to talk for a little while. What? Yeah. I'll talk to you for a little while. Yeah. So the Weird Sisters. By the t- t- yeah, that that's that's your opener. By the time this comes out, uh, the Weird Sisters will have played a show at the the fucking basement. You guys have anything else the rest of the year that you're doing? Yeah. Um, I have to look at my calendar. Um, we're doing a few things in November. Um, but yeah, this. Friday tomorrow, uh, we're going to Cincinnati, playing the Southgate House. <coughs> First time up there, it's gonna be sick. And then we're doing the basement on Saturday, and then we're doing kind of like a weird. We're gonna be like a, just putting some spacious music behind, uh, this dude at the Villager Sunday, in Nashville. Um, Is it another artist or? Ke- uh, Kevin Woodvest, yeah, yeah, he does like a TV show. I don't know. I actually have no idea what it is. I have no idea what it is. We said yes to this, and um, because he said he does a talk show at the Villager. That was why. That was why. I said oh yes. shit. Okay, so are you doing the talk show? I don't think so. I think we're just kind of like Playing? Reggie Watts. Yeah. Yeah. Just, okay. Yeah, just me and Gabby just synthesize our little guitar, drum machine, or some shit. Like just like real removed in the in the corner, just funkin'. While he does his does his thing, at least that's my idea of it. 
Get that Madison Square Inn. Let's book a room. <laughs> let's let's book a room. Um, so the Madison Square Inn, dude. You should you should ask them if um if it's haunted. <sighs> yeah, dude. Yeah. My... And then it, accuse accuse the lady of kissing your girlfriend again. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this place is... Thank you for calling the Madison Square Inn. You're welcome. If you know your party's extension, please dial it now. For all other calls, either dial zero or wait for the operator. Was I supposed to hit a button? Oh, it's ringing, yeah. Madison Square Inn. Hey, man, um, I'm actually uh, trying to uh, book a room. Do you have any availabilities? Or when do you need it for? Well, I'm kind of looking to do something special for my wife um, this weekend. Uh, you know, just trying to just trying to spice some stuff up. You know, like with the holiday season stuff coming up. You know, um, so like I just had a, I had a couple questions. Like, first of all, do you do any like festivities for um, Halloween? No, sir. This is just like a little mom pa hotel. So. You might want to check with some of the ones downtown that have special things going on. No, that's okay. I just, I really liked your price point. Um, but I'm just like, I'm just looking for like, just a little love nest for two. I mean, uh, when are you wanting it for? Um, you know, just, just the whole weekend. I'm really trying to blow it out. Oh, okay. Well, we have, I mean, we have daily rooms every day. Uh, they start at 85 a day. Well... Now you you you're gonna think I'm you're gonna think I'm a little wild, but like I'm trying to pull something off here. Like, what, do you have two that might be available? Because I got this other girl. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, you want them side the, beside each other. I mean, that'd be most convenient, but I'm like, I'm also kind of worried about the noise, you know. No, I mean they will. I mean, usually nobody complains because uh, the the daily uh, rooms here are in a separate building than from the people that lives here all the time. Oh, you got some, okay. So you got some like some long terms. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, we've had we got people that's been here twenty years. Oh, that's that are, a, that are in the front building, and then they have a separate building back by the pool. Oh, oh, so you got a you got a swimming pool. Is that uh is that available this time of year? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I might they might want to take like a like a little dip. You got like hours on that cuz like, you know, sometimes I like to to like to see the moon while I'm swimming. No, I mean, they they keep it open till around 9 o'clock at night. Uh, so. Well, the the sun sets early in Tennessee. Is that is that correct? Right. Okay. Okay. Well, do, do you have any um any like a like a hot tub? Um you got like a like like any anything warm they got no bath- they don't have any no no sir they don't have any of that here about like a bathtub you got like some like you know should, do I need to bring my own bubble bath yeah you have to uh, okay yeah they just got normal they, these are just like normal rooms uh, well, well, you you sound like a nice girl you know I'm just trying to like do something romantic for um like like aroma therapeutic right I understand. Well, uh, what, 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 when are you wanting it for? When are you wanting to come in tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be getting into town, um, like tomorrow. Um, uh, do, do you have any recommendations though on, on, uh, like aromatherapeutic bubble bath? Uh, not right off the top of my head, huh? No, okay. But uh, if you come in, you ain't gotta make reservations. We always have plenty of rooms on the weekend. Okay, okay, okay. That sounds good. What, what, what's your, what's your name exactly? My name's Cindy. Oh, Cindy. Okay, that's great. It's um, it's it's really nice to talk to you. Yeah, my name's Ezekiel. Okay. Like the bread. All right. We'll just call back if you uh, want some rooms or. Uh... Okay. Yeah, I, I I will do that. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Goodbye. Okay, that's just great because I finally got her name. I've been prank calling these motherfuckers, and the fact I finally got a name out of them. <laughs> How many times have you called? Oh, hundreds. <laughs> hundreds. I call them almost every day. <laughs> and she doesn't recognize your voice? No, I think it's because I got that forwarding thing that happens at the beginning. Oh, man. Well, you know what, dude? She she was the one on the last episode you came on. She was the, the person. She sounds cute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you were telling me earlier tonight, we were kind of chilling, um, and you were telling me about how the weird sisters have kind of changed again. Um, 
as far as the way you're playing live, what do you guys got going on? Well, the, the first way that we changed, um, Taylor, is when you left and you broke our hearts. I'm sorry, dude. No, the heart's still broken, man. I'm. I, I did what I had to do. Not actually over it yet. Um, no, yeah, we've been changing a little bit, man. Um, just putting uh, the rest of the musicians that um, have the misfortune to play with us under more duress. Um, you know, just tightening the screw further and further. Uh, no, we're doing like a, we went to New York, Gabby and I, and we had a really um, profound experience up there. We spent like, you know, under a week just running around the city pretty carelessly and um, going to a lot of like gay clubs and um, disco clubs and uh, as as well as seeing like had some really profound moments. We saw Nate Smith in his band at uh, the Blue Note. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah, that's that, cool. That was righteous, man. Well, just to be in the Blue Note, man, because you're just thinking of the like, history. Yeah, well, I don't know if I've ever stood in a room that Miles Davis has stood in, or John Coltrane, or something like that. Like I just don't. I don't know if I've ever been in a room that was quite as historical, you know, in the jazz sense or anything like that. You know, Herbie Hancock's played there and shit. Um, but like. We did that. We saw um, a band called Karungabin um, in uh, Brooklyn. We had all oh, these, I know who they are. Yeah, they're they're rad. Here is a big fan of them, dude. They're amazing live. Um, I don't know. There was just uh, a page turned um, in my brain, at very least. I know for Gabriel as well, but uh, you know, music always comes naturally for all of us. But the big page that turned in my head was. Um, way i want to feel when i go to a show that was really what i thought because i don't think i've been thoroughly as entertained as i was that week in new york as it, my entire time in nashville and that's not putting anybody down or anything but it's just like you know the water that floats my boat is just it's a little bit funkier man it's all on the one it's that it's that it's that disco groove it's 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 the funk and it always has been and there's been this huge divide between all the stuff that we've recorded and subsequently never released um, and what we've always played live. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah no. I've, I played I've you seen a, it firsthand. Yeah. I've played you a million crazy things that we've recorded at our house, and it's like it sounds nothing like what we do live. And yeah. Then, and that's why we haven't really spent so much time releasing it because it's like, oh, wow, you know, like, oh, there's what we do live and there's what we record, you know, on our own. You know, Separate experiences. Separate experiences. But the – there were a few things that happened during the pandemic for myself um, in like a technological music sense that I couldn't, I didn't know how to replicate live. And one was the use of sequencers and it really felt, fell in love with sequencers, you know, just programming like a line into a synthesizer and then syncing it to a beat clock on like a pro tools project and like, you know, sampling some drums and like, you know, just going to town on it. Um, making these like really really crazy loops like you remember that song we put out lazy crazy yeah yeah all sequ like it's all sequencer based you know and there, there was like a little drum loop in there and then it's like i called jeff up hey man come play the drums and he listened to the song and thought we were absolutely crazy uh, <laughs> um but there was you know probably like 30 40 songs like that that me and gabby wrote over the pandemic and it's like it's all great but um how do we do that live and it was really weird because we, um, we played Bob Fest, right? That was the first thing, and um, you know there was uh, there were definitely some mushrooms involved. I don't know who took them, but uh, I saw them at one point. And we played a, a three-hour set, and you know it's all these you know rock and roll type tunes, like everything we've been playing for last year, all the shit that you know that you've played with us. Um, we, we kind of threw the whole book at the wall, and it's like, yeah, we'd give him a big, long set. And then um, we ended up, Jack Silverman came up and jammed with us, and we had, like, a really, really far-out jam with him. Um, and then the DJ came on, and the DJ was just... You, you ever hear that song? Like, I want the DJ change my life. You ever hear that song? Oh, mm -hmm. man. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great disco classic, um, actually. But... I, I ran up in the woods and I listened to this DJ for, I don't know, um, till he was done with the set, maybe two hours, just sitting up there in the dark in the woods listening to a DJ. And he played the most profound stuff. But what really got to me was that the drums never quit and every song faded into the next one. And it wasn't just like songs I hadn't heard. Like every once in a while, like, oh, here comes Stevie Wonder. I was like, how is this dude doing this? Like, 
slowing down the key and the tempo and just making everything work at the same BPM. And it's just, I've never analyzed a DJ set or have ever been affected by like a DJ set spiritually. And that hit me so hard that night. And maybe like a day or two later, Gabby and I looked at each other. She ordered a drum machine. I was like, I was like, okay, yeah, you know, we use that jam with, you know, when, when someone's not around. Um, and we ended up going up to New York for a week and it was like going to all these clubs and stuff, you know, I'm just kind of circling back to that. Um, there were so many moments of watching DJs, like actual live DJs playing insane music and watching people around just exploding with just from the energy. And it's like, well, this is just recorded, you know, and I started kind of scratching my head. It was like, oh, well, a drum machine has a beat clock and so does a sequencer. I could sync them up. And uh, maybe the drummer um, can just play like, you know, like Latin grooves and percussion over top of it. So we kind of started scratching our heads about that. And we did one more gig after we got back and it was just like, dude, fuck our music. Like, fuck this shit. It's not fun. Like, we're tired of playing this type shit. Like, let's, I mean, it's like just for us. Like, I want yeah. to, I don't want to, you know, there, there are a lot of people out there that, you know, humbly speaking, like really did resonate with a lot of that music that we were playing. But like, I think Gabby and I, for sure, um, we're starting to really feel the growing pains in Asheville and just wanted to, just desperately waiting for a left turn creatively. And this entire year, we've just been like, we've been gigging and stuff, but we're like also just throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks and like trying to find like just that next unique sonic plateau and, you know, whatever. Um, but as soon as we started doing that, it was like, oh my God, like, we're dance commanders now. <laughs> we can just like, you know, we can just, we can just, we can just make, um, we can just endless grooves and we can finally find a way to be funky instead of so rocky and um, finally find a way to incorporate that side of us that was only able to blossom in a studio setting. And man, it just felt so good to play the last couple of weeks, man, because everything feels so fresh and new and it's grooving and it's challenging and it's like, because I'm playing a lot of keys right now. I'm doing a lot of vocals on a vocoder and stuff, too. And it's like, um, I've just never been so inspired. And it's like getting into some music that I thought I knew really well. Like, I've been on a big P-Funk kick, man. Just listen to Uncle George, Boosie, man. Bernie Worrell, man, you know. And then getting back into JB is Fred Wesley, man. Maceo Parker. And, like, just, man, there's just so much about music that every time you have a development period, it's like, you got to go back and review the shit that you thought you knew. Cause it, I know exactly what you mean. I mean, it, it's like you're going back with uh, new ears because you've learned some new skills. Yeah, well, it's also, it's, seeing, it's like a lot of stuff well, I've heard, I think, in the past is just that's so out of reach. And, you know, trying to do as much as we can as a four-piece. And, you know, we've been lucky to have, like, just the most tremendous rhythm sections, like, ever in the last year. You're included in that, dude. Thanks, yeah, man. you. Yeah, I you appreciate. Dude, it. we had so many fun gigs. We did. It was a, it was a good time. I mean, we, I mean, we we play well together because we've played so much together. But really, like before we were, I was playing with like the Weird Sisters. We only ever really played one actual song together, and that was Gina in the studio <laughs> everything else was just us doing like 40 minute jams yeah. and being high and shit you know what i mean yeah which, which i think that's where real chemistry you know comes from man it's like you know you can get, teach any you know you know any sheepdogs man to you know follow the light playing yeah. the song you want man but like follow the chords yeah man you know it's just breadcrumbs after a certain point but it's like getting that relationship you know it's like because well, i I knew all your impulses years before we ever tried to learn any of, you know, Weird Sister music or something. Yeah. You know, like I just, I, I, that's why I was like, oh yeah, call Taylor. We're, we're fucking with bass players now. Yeah. Let's, let's call Taylor. It right. was the same way, um, playing with Teo and James as well, because the first maybe three or four times we played together, we were just straight jamming, you know, yeah. at Graycroft, uh, Graycroft North at the Stagers. Yeah. 
That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah, I came to a couple of those. Yeah. There were a lot of faces. I remember seeing Nathan from Downboy up there at one point. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, a couple. He's a great those. player, dude. Oh, dude. He's he's insane. I should get him on the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. He's him, a nasty player. All, all, all three of those Downboy brothers, man, they're they're wicked musicians. Yeah. And very nice. Very nice guys. Yeah, I've been um I've been craving a change myself, but uh, you know, we we were talking before we got started tonight just kind of like everything that's been going on with me, dude. And I mean, you've you've kind of been able to to see some of it this year where every fucking time I went to go do something, it w- it's just purely striking out. Like I have a job now, which is weird. You know what I mean? Like that's new it's not a bad experience though i um i like being back in a sales environment again um and i don't feel any pressure or stress with music right now i just want to fall back in love with it again and fall back in love with playing again like fall back in love with playing bass fall back in love with writing songs um and all that stuff because it's like sometimes i sit down to write and, like, I just, for better or worse, I sound like myself now. Yeah. And um, I'm fed up with the way that I sound. And I that's kind of what you were saying to a certain degree. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, you just, you're drinking your own pee for too long, man. Yeah. Just, yeah, you start getting mad cow disease. Um, yeah, that, that's, I think there's a lot about intent. There's a lot to say about intent. Because intent can really be a powerful thing but it can also be the the one thing that's in the way and i what's that actually kind of ties into what you're saying about um you know jamming like you know when you tail and james were getting together that's all you did was jam it's like imagine you guys just went in there and was like we have to write the song it's like you can you got you got to play with it you know no for sure and i think i that's going to come back around again playing with tail and james but I'm just seeing with yourself, man. Yeah, no, for sure, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, music, it hasn't been fun in a while, you know? Like, I had fun, like, playing with you guys and doing doing all that shit. It was a good time. But there's, that that was, like, fruits of labor, almost. Like, where I finally started to experience some fruits of my of all my work and like dedication over the years in Nashville of eating shit. Yeah. And it was cool and it really felt like an achievement. But I even I even told you like at a, like that was a, a peak for me in some ways and I was on top of the fucking mountain. I was doing all this shit, man. I was doing too much shit. I was overcommitted because I wanted to be, you know, like I wanted to be playing in multiple bands. I wanted to be doing multiple podcasts. And then I didn't have any free time and I didn't ever really take care of myself. I didn't take care of myself at all. I didn't sleep enough. I didn't eat well. I was just constantly burning the candle at both ends. And I burned the fuck out and lost lost control. Not with like drugs or alcohol or anything like that, but... I was just not in charge at the wheel anymore. No, yeah, when you're that busy, you're you're not. You're just... It, it, and there's also got to be a certain part of you that was like, well, if, the, if that really was an experience for you, a time in your life where you're like, this is what I was working towards, um, then you got to... You always look around and it's like, well, now what? Yeah, and yeah. that's that's what it was because there, there's still other things I want to do. I mean, once I kind of start getting back to a somewhat normal state, I would um, I would really like to focus more on jazz, um, jazz, and of course producing and, and still doing the podcast. I'm I'm proud of all the things that I've done, but this has just been a year from hell and I want to add in enjoyment back into my life. You're taking it on the chin though, man. Like it's, it's really inspiring to watch because it is had, this has not been a good year for you. No, but, but you're, but you're taking it with a, with a smile on your face for the most part, man. And like, like you said, it's just like you, 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 you've accepted it. Um, who else should we call dude? Oh, okay. Um, 
What, you got any suggestions? Uh, look up, look up another hotel, and um, I'll talk to him this time. Oh my god, yes. Okay. Uh, uh, do you want uh, do you want out in Vegas? Oh, a Vegas hotel early. Yeah, yeah, because it, it's still early out there, early ish. Yeah. Um, let's see if I can find like a local joint. I didn't. I didn't know how to like you know get her crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But you, you started off so nice. Yeah. No. I just. I just stayed nice the entire time. But um. But I think we can call her later. <laughs> we can call her later. Yeah. May, maybe I can give her a call later. Okay. You want the flamingo, the mirage? Yeah. Any one of those. Okay. And it's bullshit. Okay. Hold on. Oh, forty-eight dollars, dude. We should go to Vegas. Fuck yeah. Okay, wait. That's where Danny's from. Is it? Yeah. Oh he God. grew up in Las Vegas. Wait, how do, how do I call this stuff? Google's done changed. Do you know how to use cell phones? Not entirely, honestly. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's just gotten a little complex. <laughs> do you want to switch? You want me to put my phone on there now? No, it's not, I'm just stupid. Um, okay, there we go. Get a little call rolling. Thank you for calling the Downtowner Boutique Hotel. Hi, yeah. Is the general manager in? Uh, no, not until tomorrow. Okay, is there maybe like a night manager in that I could talk to? No, there's not one until tomorrow. Okay. That's... Like any manager. Are you that... a guest right now? Um, no, actually, uh, it's, it's, it's funny. So uh, maybe you can help me out. Okay. Um, yeah, my name's Steven. I work for Easy Breezy Carpet Cleaning, and I was just wondering who you guys were currently using for kind of your carpet cleaning, your tile and grout, uh, upholstery, stuff like that. Okay, yeah, so I'm not really sure. You would have to talk to, um, yeah, the general manager, so I would just call back tomorrow anytime after 9. Okay, I, um... I have another question as well. Do you guys have any availability on Halloween? Um, yeah, we should. You just got to book it online. Okay, I kind of got a little bit of a weird question for you. Um, do you know if there's any paranormal activity at your hotel ever? Um, I mean... No, I haven't. I haven't witnessed anything myself. No. Do you believe in paranormal activity and ghosts and, and stuff like that? And yeah, I do. Have you ever had an experience before? In my life, or yeah, here at the hotel? Yeah, yeah, in your life. Oh yeah, a, a bunch of times. I have too. Everybody always thinks I'm crazy. What's what's happened to you? I mean, when I was little, I used to see stuff at, like, my grandma's house all the time. It was weird. Was it, what did just you like, see? It was just, <laughs> it sounds crazy, but um, just, like, transparent, like, people that look, like, transparent. Like, obviously, they weren't there, but they, like, you could see them, but they were kind of, like, transparent. That's scary. But, I mean... That's when I was, like, younger, so I don't... No, I feel that. I mean... I don't know. I'm I'm just... I want to book a room, but... I'm just worried. That's the... Hold on, give me one second. That's the body soap, yeah. Hello? Yeah, I'm there. Um, I'm here. Uh, do, do you know um, if there's... Um, I think, like, a haunted... Ho well, uh, have you been to, like, Zach... Have you heard of Zach Bang Zach Bang's Haunted Museum? No, what is that? It's uh here, let me get the right what it's really called. So I've like I met like I met a bunch of people who go there and they said it's pretty it's Zach Baggins Haunted Museum. Is that like Frodo's cousin or something? Who? Frodo, you know, from Lord of the Rings, Frodo Baggins. Oh no, I don't know. <laughs> but I heard that that place is pretty haunted. 
what is it called? Zach but, Baggins uh, Haunted Museum. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna look but, into uh, that. Where are you? Where are you? Are where are you from? Um. Well, I'm in Tennessee right now, but I I own a, a carpet cleaning business, so I'm on the road frequently. Um, easy breezy carpet cleaning. Um, we've we've really been expanding. I'm, so I'm I'm just trying to. I got a couple of clients there in Vegas, like some other hotels I work with, some casinos, and we're just trying to keep things growing. But I'm just I'm a naturally curious person. I I also do like paranormal investigations, even though it scares me. But um, yeah, I was interested in maybe coming to your hotel to check it out. Uh, my phone died. Oh no! Damn, dude, that was amazing. <laughs> you can. Sp- here, I'm gonna keep recording. Here, give me that shit. Yeah, yeah, that was brilliant. It was called Zach Baggins. I found it. Okay, I'll look. I'll look it up. We're looking up. So Isaac's phone died. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, at a certain point, I just had to because it, it's at every turn, just things were going wrong. I mean, it really started um, a, about a year ago. Whenever my my amp died at the the gig at the end. Oh my god! Let's just talk about that gig for a second. That was, that was a sweet gig. Yeah, it was a sweet. That gig. That was one of those gigs where it was like, man, we were all on. Um, yeah, but okay. So for those of you who don't know, Taylor plugged in his uh, Fender Rubble 15, and because he was playing with us, he had to turn up all the way every time we ever played, and uh, he tur- it just it just stopped working at that point. Thank God there was a house bass amp. Yeah. Well, no, it wasn't a house bass amp. It was those, um, the dudes who were headlining the show. I used that guy's stack. I, oh, is it that was, true? yeah, it was like a Galligan Kruger or something like that. And, um, he let me, he let me use it. And, um, yeah, it, it was, that's when things started going wrong. I'm like, a week later, my alternator died in my car. That's right. And I, I had to stop. I wasn't able to make any money for two weeks. Got that fixed. Was starting to roll in December again. Two weeks later, the shit with all the vertigo shit started happening. And that's what it's been ever since. And it's like I was I was playing with you guys, playing with Violet Moons. I decided to leave to focus on my health and like having a job. Because at that point, I had a job that was locked down. I was ending... Um, like I had one more gig that I was going to play with busted mustard and Norfleet on, on a Sunday night. And that Monday I was supposed to start work the next day. And then that Friday, the company called me and was like, Hey, it's a no go. We're doing layoffs. And, um, because like, truthfully, like I wasn't making a lot of money play, playing music, but it was a part-time job. Like I was at least making some money. I was able to pay some of my bills with it. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, we, we paid you. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah was... you you paid me. Violet I... Moons paid me. Um, and we were we were always busy with Violet Moons. Like, there yeah. was some weeks where we were playing two gigs, three gigs, and then on top of that, just rehearsals before every single gig. Dude, the rehearsals, man. Yeah, and it's like, it's, I'm putting you through, like, string theory, trying to, like, get our bullshit down with, like, and it's not even, like, the music's that complicated. It's like, okay, and then, you know, and then we're going to do this, like, all these, like, little intricate moments, you know? Yeah, I mean, it was detail, a detail-oriented gig, um, but that that Did, was what I liked about it. They though. were both pretty, I, I would say the Violet Moons are pretty detail-oriented in their own, they're, they're not just like four chord jams. No, I mean, yeah. like very feel. Oriented. Yeah, it's it's all it was all about the the feel with them. Yeah, and um, like they're they're songwriters, they're great songwriters and great singers, of course. But like, um, really that that gig was about holding back, and then with you guys, it was like, like and I've told you this before, like playing with you guys, it's a chops gig. Like you have to be able to to fucking play. There's no ifs, ifs, ands, or buts about it. You have to, <laughs> you have to know your fucking instrument if you're gonna play with the Weird Sisters. Because if you don't, uh, you need to just fuck off, and you need to quit right then and there. But you guys wouldn't fuck with anybody who didn't. Well, uh, you yeah, know what well, I mean. I, you don't fuck with amateurs. Um, I, f- I fuck with amateurs, but um, but it's, not but, in your fucking band. No, not my band. Um, no, no, but it's um. I think what we're constantly, me and Gabrielle, are trying to do is constantly push ourselves and each other, our music, um, as 
far as we can at any given time. Like me and Gabby are not stoked unless we are pushing our limits in some way. Like right now, the limit that I'm pushing is like playing the keys and then switching the guitar. I, I recently started playing a Strat instead of a in my SG. Um, and that's all just a big lesson in the guitar don't fucking matter. And the pedal board's next and then the amp. Like, I would just want to, like, I want to be the type of guitar player that can, you know, just like, yeah, just give me, you know, anything. Anything, I will make it sound sexy. I'm through the wild, wild west as it never was. Visit VenetianLasVegas.com for the current <laughs> What's your fascination with Vegas? They're open right Thank now. you for calling the Venetian Resort. Your call may be recorded for uh -oh. quality assurance. Thank you for calling the Venetian Resort, Las Vegas. My name is Lee. How may I assist you? Hey, yeah. Is the general manager in right now? No, they'd be in in the mornings. Okay. Um, maybe you can help me out. I'm the hotel operator. I can get the front desk manager for you. That would be great. Yeah, thank you. One moment. Visiting oh, Venetian Resort. with this, Taylor? Willing to cancel? Please visit VenetianLasVegas.com slash cancel. <laughs> To request a copy of your folio, please visit venetianlasvegas.com slash folio. Thank you for calling Venetian front office. Hey, yeah, do you have any availability for Monday for Halloween? Um, let me see. Uh, it does look like we have availability on Monday. Okay, cool. Um, I have a weird follow-up question for you. Okay. Do you know if there's any paranormal activity at your hotel? Um, none that I'm aware of. Have you ever experienced any kind of like paranormal activity before? Not, not at the hotel, no. A outside of the hotel, though, are you a believer? Like, uh, yeah. There it's is a, um, a place that's, like, right down, like, by the art district that's heavy with that type of activity. Like, what? It, what is it? What do you What do you mean? It, um, the, the, um, what is it called? The Zach Baggins? I've heard about this place before. What's, it's, what's the deal with it? It's, for me, it was a lot to take in, honestly, but it was, it was really cool. But you do feel like different energies and whatnot would you would you see there um i didn't see anything specific i try to avoid those rooms because i i'm a little I, i'm a scary cat to be honest <laughs> i am too uh, like I'm, <laughs> I'm just i'm trying to come to town i just got divorced honestly um i caught my wife with my best friend and now, like, I don't have a wife or a best friend. So I'm just oh I'm just God. feeling kind of depressed. It was horrible. I'll spare you the details. But it's pretty much exactly what you imagine. Um, so I'm looking to just to come to Las Vegas and see some paranormal shit. It makes me happy. Not much makes me happy anymore these days, if I'm going to be honest. Yeah, I would. I would definitely suggest that place then. Honestly, it like if you're into just like the paranormal activities and like the high vibes of it, it's. It, um, I felt heavy afterwards, but it was. If I come to Las Vegas, would you be down to? <laughs> You didn't ask her about the hoagie? I couldn't do it, dude. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't. I need to work on my Taylor Berryman impression so we can just, like, pass off. And, like, um, So if I come down to uh, Las Vegas, what does your voice sound? <laughs> your That's, that sounds, like, mildly German. <laughs> so do you. <laughs> okay. Who else should we call, Isaac? Oh, shit. Ah, oh, man. Well, Keith Keith Richards, yeah. he has this great quote where he says, "Give me any guitar and any amp, and it'll sound like Keith Richards in five minutes." 
which is true. And I mean, yeah. as as much as like we like to pretend that the the gear is magical, which it is to a certain degree. The gear is magical. Yeah, it is. But it's also it's in the hands, man. Yeah. You know, I I think so many when I worked at Wildwood Guitars out in Colorado, dude, there were so many like old dudes who finally bought like a a nice strat that they spent, you know, 10, 15 grand on or some shit like that. <laughs> like some custom shop, really nice like the value of my car. Yeah. Uh kind of stuff. And the one thing they would always be like they would return the guitar and be like, well, it d- doesn't sound right. And it's like, yeah, of course it doesn't sound right because you're thinking about fucking Eric Clapton playing uh, a Stratocaster and you can't, you're not Eric Clapton. Like, you don't have the years of experience. And it's like there's a difference between people who play an instrument and, p- like, players. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, sure. killers. Yeah. Um. So, it, I don't know. It, it was interesting because it's like the other thing that they would always fucking do, like every fucking church worship leader would come in there and they would get like a Taylor guitar, which I, <laughs> I, I hate Taylor guitars, dude. Fuck them. They, they sound like shit. I just don't like them. And um, they're so ugly. Yeah, they're ugly. They sound ugly. All of them come with elixir strings, which are oh pussy God. strings, dude. Yeah, dude. Everybody knows elixirs are for pussies. Hey, man. Truth. Um, but they would they would play "My Sweet Lord" by uh, <laughs> George Harrison. George Harrison. Yeah. And I just wanted to be like, I don't even at the age of twenty one when I was living out there. I just wanted to be like, I don't think. That song means what you think it means. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, this is like, Harry Christmas. Yeah. Baba. Yeah, man. No, not at all. That's, I can't believe, I can't believe you saw that so many times that it's like, that was a thing that you saw. Oh, that there. was a thing. And, bro, honestly, one of the, the, a song, if I never heard it again, that I wouldn't be upset about, uh, Wonderful Tonight by Eric Clapton. Yeah, dude. man, not his best. I, I fucking hate that song, dude. Man, you know, Cream doesn't work for me anymore. Really? Yeah, no, I love Ginger Baker, um, because of all the Fela Kuti stuff. Yeah. Um, but Cream doesn't work for me anymore. I love Clapton. I learned a lot from the Clapton thing. Um, Blind Faith works for me. That's very original music. Um, you know, him Derek is, and the Dominoes. Derek and the Dominoes. Yeah, yeah. Layla's a great, great record. Um, but he's kind of the John Mayer of his generation. Absolutely, yeah, I yeah. would agree with that. And I, as the older I've gotten, I think that there is. It's a little weird to see white guys playing the blues. Let me see. Oh shit! Wait, I wonder if this guy's still fucking alive. Who is it? Curtis Lunt. Don't know him. Here, yeah. Let me <laughs> you, so okay, so like there was what the town I grew up in. There was this uh, little convenience store called Lunsky's. It might even still be there. I have no fucking idea. Um, but these two brothers owned it. It was Curtis and John Lunt. And uh, every Halloween, we would go there. And we would buy lima beans and corn. And we'd go around the town, and we'd go tic-tacking. And what that meant was just, like, you take the lima beans or the corn, you just throw it at people's houses. And then they were like, they come out, and they're like, what the fuck? And then, you know, you throw the lima beans and corn at them. And, and you give them, the, like, fuck you, and you run. <laughs> Um, and she, you know, we, we do that for like in TP people's houses. We would do that for like a month before Halloween and like a month after just torture people. Um, but there were a few instances where people would get like a little bit too, um, they take it a little bit too seriously. The fact that we were kids and I this, there was this one dude's place. We just called him crazy dude. And he ended up getting like a beanbag gun. And, um, you know, like, he ended up, like, shooting a kid with the beanbag gun. Oh, like, fuck. Yeah, dude. yeah, like, like fucking him up. And then this other kid, um, I think it was either Roy Pachersky or his brother Turkey. And, like, he just, he knocked his ass over and just beat the shit out of him one day. This, the guy, this, like, fucking 40-year-old dude just come running out of his house and just, like, try and attack these children. Um, but that was, that was kind of, like, the fun of uh, Halloween, you know? Potentially was, like, dying? Yeah, no, there was one dude's house, John Galetti's dad. I would go to his house... Every night at two in the morning, I would walk there with a couple rolls of toilet paper and I would TP their house. I did it for like every day for like three weeks. 
and you know just going back to school like on one hour of sleep just being like but they just kept trying to figure out who's doing this who the fuck is doing this they couldn't figure out when i was doing it or who who it was and it was like yeah man it's me i'm 15 and i got nothing else to do um let's see if we can call one of the lunts though curtis lunt Who is this? Hey, is this Kurt? No, sir. Oh my God. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Wait, who, who is this? Wait, this is who is this? My name. Oh, hey. Um, yeah, my name's Bill. Um, I just I was calling this dude Curtis. I was gonna let him know Billy Menio's cows out right now. Man, they're heading for his place. Um, do you know Curtis Lunt? I do not. Man, these cows are out right now. Man, I can see them. Um, but uh, I didn't realize I was gonna be talking to you. Uh. Have you ever yeah. have you ever had a haunting? Have you ever had a paranormal experience? No, but what's going on? Uh well, you know, it's a it's that it's that season right now, you know. Um right. it's that time of year and uh you know, I I haven't seen any ghosts myself like, you know, within the last couple of weeks, but yeah. I'm just I was wondering if you had. Um, no, but something creepy happened to me, like, uh, when I was walking at night, I kept hearing screaming, from, like, screaming and crying and dogs and whistling, but they were coming from the woods, which, like, that part of the woods wasn't, like, it wasn't part of the house or anything, it was just pure woods. Oh, shit, for real? Yeah. So I had to walk home, I was, like, I was running for my life. <laughs> oh, my God. Dog, wh wh where are you at? That's, that's wild. I live in Pennsylvania. Yeah, yeah, me, me too. Um, are you, like, the Mon Valley? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I. I like. I live near Cal. Right. Okay. I live near uh, Belvern and Minnesota type. Okay. Yeah. I. I can dig that. Yeah. Yeah. So I was trying to call Curtis Lunt, man. Like he. He's from like Roscoe. Um. But like th this is the craziest thing. The reason why I ask about the paranormal thing, like, someone told me I saw the cows myself. They're out. Like they, they are. They're plowing through. But um, someone told me a, a ghost let the cows out, and I was like, dude. Come on, who oh. let the dogs out? You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, yeah, yeah. It's like a ghost, but it's like you know, there's a little haunting going on. Like I wouldn't be surprised, cause like, dog between yeah. you and me, Mon Valley creepy. As fuck, yo. Dude, I know we gotta get out of there. We got. I'm, I'm trying. Trust. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Where, where, where you trying to go? Honestly, I'm not sure. I haven't been to a lot of places, so I'm not necessarily sure where I should go. But I'm not. I'm trying to get out of here. I really am. Yeah, man. Well, you know. You just you keep your chin up. You you'll get there someday. I believe in you. Thank you. You're What's welcome. your name? Uh, my name's Isaac. <laughs> Hi. Hey. What's your last name? Uh, short. Mm, okay. Okay. Well, do you got social media? Yeah, I do. What do you have? Uh, you can just hit me up on Instagram if you want. At Isaac Short. Hold on. Let me go find you. Yeah, are we are we vibing or what? <laughs> we are vibing because you're funny as fuck. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. You know, I I learned everything I know from uh from Bill Cosby and um Red Fox. Yeah. <laughs> and my and my dad. <laughs> so which one are you? Like, how do you spell it? Oh, it's a uh, I Z A A C. You know the wow. craziest thing about my dad? What? He only has one ball. He only has one what? ball ball yeah one ball like i'm sorry like you know like his uh, like 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 ball like testicles uh testicular that's i'm, I'm talking testicular to you <laughs> <laughs> okay okay <laughs> <laughs> no yeah it's i z a a c short like small petite little refined <laughs> you want the one with the, with the sign on on your, your profile i believe so Okay, yeah, I got you. Yeah, am I good looking enough for you? Yeah, you're pretty good looking. Oh, okay. Wow, a good review. You're funny. You're pretty funny. I like it. <laughs> well, shit, girl, hit me up. I got you. I hit you up, Tris. <laughs> All right. Hey, have a, have a nice night, okay? I'm going to go. You too. Uh, Don't let the ghost get you. Yeah, hey, you too. We got we to gotta keep each other safe out there. Oh, shit. All I'll right. talk to you later. Yeah, look out for the cows, man. Bye. Bye. That was, was, that was not Curtis Lunt. <laughs> she was down to clown, dude. Dude, yeah, she's down with it. Gabby's going to be pissed when she hears this. Uh, is she? Yeah, of course she is. Nah, man.
she'll, she'll have something smart ass to say about the Mon Valley, but that girl seemed really nice. I wonder if that girl's hot. I wonder, man. Yeah. Look, look it up. Look it up to see. Yeah, it's, uh, what, did she actually follow you? I bet she did, dude. You think? Bro, you might have been the first person to ever get a girl interested in you from doing a fucking prank call. You want to try Madison Square Inn again? Oh, yeah. Let, um, let me try this time. Here, pass that back. Oh, there we go. There we are. Yeah, we're back. We're back. Yeah, no, you need to... Thank you for calling the Madison Square Inn. If you know your party's extension, please dial it now. For all other calls, either dial zero or wait for the operator. Front desk. Hey, um, yeah, is the manager in? No, they're not. Can I help you with something? Um, yeah, you might be able to help me out. Uh, this is, uh... Steven with Easy Breezy Carpet Cleaning. Um, I was just tr- trying to find a manager to talk to about uh, cleaning the carpets for you guys. Uh, they'll be here about 10 o'clock in the morning if you want to call back. Okay. Well, um, maybe you can actually help me out. Hey, what do you need? Yeah, I was just wondering how often you were having like the, the carpets and the upholstery cleaned. They don't. They don't? They just vacuum them. Yikes. Have you guys ever had bed bugs there before? Never had what? Bed bugs? Uh, not, as far as I know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know about that. I mean, I just answer the phone for them. Do you like your job? Uh, it's, I, there, I, I, have, I, have two, I have two other full times. I just, I just work here part time to help them out. Are you friend, uh, friends with, like, the owner or the manager or something? Well, I know the owners. I know the people that own it. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Um. Do you guys have any availability for Halloween on Monday? Oh, I'm sure they will. We, they have availability all the time. Okay. Yeah. Um. I kind of got a weird question for you. Is that it? Well, I I was wondering, is there ever any, like, paranormal kind of activity at the hotel? No, we have 20... They have round, They have cameras all over this place, so... I mean, what kind of activities are you talking about? Like, like paranormal, like, ghost kind of activities. No, not as far as I know, they don't. Are you a believer? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, dude, yeah, dude. They take no shit sometimes, dude. That's like sometimes you just gotta get it in quick. It's like she ain't there to chat. She's there to tell you to fuck off or to fucking like. How much does this shit cost per hour? Like, <laughs> it, guys, our age, we've single handedly watched. We watched Joe Bonamassa single handedly destroy blues. You mean the guy that signed your guitar? Oh, you want, yeah, well, yeah, and then I fucking sanded it off. I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know when I met him that he was such a douche, dude. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. Like, if I sit and listen to, like, a Joe Bonamassa interview, it's like, oh, yeah, this little, like, nerdy white guy is, like, he's got some interesting shit to say. Yeah. Like, I met him, like, he's weird. He's weird looking. He's just, like, you know, he, he should be running a vintage guitar shop in, like, not shredding blue scales. Like, it's the most obnoxious shit I've ever heard in my life. Like, destroying the blues. Like, like it's and all these blues cats man like this is the music that they created to come from that was a camaraderie everything was happening in chicago like it's i've just i've just know enough about it where it's like you got you just got to respect it and either take it to outer space and you know just continue to work you know work on it um but don't stay in the traditional sense and just try and overdo it because that's that's bad. That's a bad thing. That that's an evil thing to do to the blues because now when people think certain people they are, they think oh I love the blues and they're thinking about like a like a Marcus King or like a you know Kingfish or like a Joe Bonamassa like fuck all three of those guys. They fucking suck. 
They're fucking pieces of shit for fucking calling themselves blues players, dude. They know nothing about the fucking genre, and they don't deserve to fucking play the guitar. They know nothing about it. What makes you say that? They, Dude, it's just they're shredding the blues. They're not doing anything creative. Like, I get there's an audience, but, like, that is literally supply and demand. Because, like, all these blues cats, like, they were amazing because they were playing on the absolute limits of their abilities. You go and see Buddy Guy, to this day, he plays on the absolute limits of his abilities as a guitar player, creatively, spiritually. Like, that's what it's about. That's what it's about. And that's what he, that's where he, that's what he knows. That's where he's from. He's on all those chess records recordings. Like, Buddy Guy had been there, done that since the beginning. But he's the last one. Like, I saw B.B. King live, man. Like, that motherfucker can do it. Like, he, then that's what he, do, that's his thing. He invented that thing that he does. But it's like you get a fucking guy like Joe Bonamassa. It's like, bro, you what? Are you are you fucking Peter Green today? Are you gonna try and be fucking Clapton tomorrow? Are you gonna be over here playing a T Bone Walker lick? Like, fuck you. Well, fucking it, blues lawyer. Yeah, exactly. Fuck you and your fucking eight hundred thousand dollar guitar. Fucking fifteen dollars Paul can suck my dick. That shit's dumb. That shit's dumb, bro. Yeah. That shit pisses me off. It's like, dude, like, fuck. It's not, but it's like, it's just a guitar. And it's not that it's just a guitar. If it's special to you, it's special to you. But a guitar doesn't start to fucking feel special unless you put fucking 10,000 hours in it. I know because my SG, when I fucking, I can feel it across the room. Because I played that guitar nonstop for the past fucking seven years. And I'm not saying, like, I played it, like, every day. I played it for hours and hours and hours every fucking day. A guitar is, like... Like, we have an understanding. It's like, the f like, that guitar is relieved that I'm not touching it and playing my strat. That guitar is like, fuck, I need a break, dude. He's worn me out. Like, fuck Joe Bonamassa. Forever. Fuck that bitch. Well, I will say, on the same note of, of jo Joe Bonamassa and, and Les Pauls, dude, I've played really nice, expensive Les Pauls, like, vintage shit, dude. I will say that your Les Paul is the best sounding out of all Les Pauls I've ever heard. <laughs> Thank you, man. I love my Les Paul. She, she, she very, she very sentimental. Yeah, it's a special guitar, dude. Okay, hold on. Let me let me look here. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna look up the um. What is that big hotel downtown that looks like a space station? The Sheraton? Not this. Not the Sheraton. Looks like a space station. It's the JW. JW? Yeah. GW. You know. HW. Are you an HW? Versus just uh. Versus just W. Yeah, I mean, I you know a little bit of Herbert, a little bit of Herbert in there. Herbertron. <laughs> Good evening, thank you for calling Jaden Marriott Nashville. This is Bridget. How can I help you? Hey, Bridget. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Um, do you have any availability on Monday for Halloween? Give me one moment to check on that for you, okay? Okay. Uh, it looks like we do have availability. Do you want me to connect you with reservations? Um, no. I just got a couple of questions about the the sure. hotel itself. Uh, me and my wife are gonna be in town. She's a goth chick, so she it's like a, her most special day of the year. I know this sounds weird, but she like is wanting to stay in a place with like paranormal activity. It's kind of like a thing for her you know what i mean and Personally, um i would suggest the union station hotel is is it haunted yes what's the deal with it uh you know you know like most hotels are a little uh, or at least a little haunted because you know people are always dying in hotels uh, people are always station, dying in like, hotels people die in every hotel heart attacks i mean you know it happens it hasn't happened at this hotel yet but we're still relatively new that's part of it but, like, if you go to any hotel that's older than 10 years, people have died in them. And Nicole Smith died in a hotel. 
yeah, people die in hotels all the time. It's it just, you know, it's a thing. You're traveling, you know, you, you do too much, you have a heart attack. The Union Station, however, used to be a train station, and there was a crash. What kind of crash? Uh, a train crashed into a trolley. Did it kill a bunch of people? A couple of them. Injuries, mostly. But this is years ago. But as far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, the Union Station Hotel is probably the most haunted hotel in Nashville. Oh shit! Hold on, I'm gonna pass you to my buddy. He he's got a few questions about this. Okay, so how many people died? I don't know exact numbers. It's just based on what we report, reported at the time. Like this was a long time ago. It's like I think like three or four of them. But again, it was mostly injuries. Okay, that's a couple. That's all. That's all right. Um. Okay. Uh. But. But, but people die at your hotel often? Right. Not mine. As I said to your friend, no one said in this hotel. We're still relatively new. I'm just saying in general, people die in hotels. Not here, but in general. Nah. Um. Okay. So I got, I got another question for you. Um, sure. So I personally don't want to stay at a hotel where people people have died at. Um. My wife is very well, adamant. station is- as far as the Union Station is concerned, people died when it was still a train station, not when it was a hotel. I still don't like it. It, it, it. I'm I'm not into it. But my wife is super into it. She wants to have, like, a, a seance um, in the hotel room on Halloween. Uh, could you one of your rooms, like, accommodate to that? Uh, well, considering the seances usually require you to change the flooring in the room, no. Well, I, I'm the contractor. That's why I'm also on the line. Um, is that something that your hotel is not okay with? Because, um, everything I do, I'd put back. It, you, it, it's not something that we would typically allow here, so no. Well, it is for religious purposes. Right, and um, we accommodate religious purposes as long as it does not change the room in the hotel. Well, so mama- we can't have anyone ripping up carpeting. We can't have anyone drawing on the walls. And I, I do know that that is what seance is normally involved. No, that, that, that's fine. Like, he, he, my, my friend is Jewish, and his girlfriend's a goth chick. Like, can you make an exception? Uh, sir, if you wanted someone to make an ex- exception, that's something you'd have to speak to a manager about. I do apologize. Okay, I'll, I'll I, tomorrow after nine. That, that, that's fine. We're gonna call back tomorrow and talk to a manager. Um, that is just you know, I've been I've been building homes and stuff for like twenty five years, and I would say I'm a master of my craft. And you have nothing to worry about. I'm hoping that you can put in a good word because we're really sure, trying to I understand let that. Halloween I go off with a bang. Cannot make the accommodation. It would be something a manager would have to make. That's tight. Wait, I got I got a question for you. Sure. What is your policy on sacrificing animals? <laughs> Probably the same as our policy on accommodating prank phone calls like this one. Hey, ah, happy Halloween! <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's called the... Okay, so, dude, if you can think of something fucked up to say to Union Station, I was the nighttime valet dude there for, like, two months last year, dude. I rolled into that place, and I was like, bro, I want to work from 11 to 7 a.m. every day. And I worked there seven nights a week for, like, two and a half months. And they all thought I was crazy because I was just out there smoking cigarettes and just fucking um, scribbling in my notebook and playing guitar. You want me to You want me to call the Union Station? Well, I'm trying to think of something fucked up to say to them because you can drop my name and just ruin that whole thing. Like, I don't care. It'd be like, just say I did something terrible. <laughs> okay. Just say I did something terrible. It's like, you know, do you remember you had a midnight guy working there? Isaac Short, da 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 He did this to so-and-so. I, I'm How just, long ago was it? Uh, I quit that job in, like, October of last year. It's been about a year. Okay. Yeah. Um, but if Wesley's still working the front, then <laughs> a lot of those dudes will remember me. And if they don't, just ask for security, because those dudes will never leave. They get paid too much. But that, that hotel sucks. It's like only old people go there, and people were definitely dying. People were definitely dying all the time, because you don't go to that hotel unless you're over 80. Thanks for calling Station. How may I help you? Hey, yeah. Do you have any availability for Monday for Halloween? Um, one second. Um, yes, we actually have plenty of availability. Um, so you'd have to go online and um, book the reservation. 
Okay, um, maybe you can give me some info. Um, I'm going to be coming there with my wife. Uh, she's super into Halloween. We hear Nashville turns up for Halloween. Is that true? Yeah, pretty much. Um, and our seventh floor is haunted, so... Haunted. That might be interesting for you. What, uh, what's uh, what's the deal with it? Oh, this used to be a train station, so there's um, scary stories about this hotel. Oh no! Ask I'm... about the haunted <laughs> train. <laughs> like our room, Seven Eleven. Uh, that's Abigail's room, um, and that's our haunted room. Who's Abigail? Uh, she pretty much, when this was a train station, was waiting on her um, spouse to come back from the military, I guess, and oh. she. He died, so she killed herself. She jumped out the window and onto I, the train track. Oh my God, that is horrible. Is that is that room yeah. available? <laughs> uh, it might be on Halloween. Uh, we only have about ten arrivals. There's 125 rooms in the hotel, so we have plenty of availability. Um, if you go ahead and book, I could go ahead and block you into that room. Okay, yeah, I'll take a look at it. I mean. If I'm gonna be real, my wife is looking to do some kind of seance. Okay. Um. One second. Uh, I have my coworker to give you some suggestions. Okay. Okay. One second. Okay. Uh, they would want to know what kind of party you would be having in your room. Hello. This is Roosevelt. <laughs> Your name is Roosevelt? Bro, fuck that. I just hung up. <laughs> I couldn't handle it when he said it. When he said Roosevelt. Name, Roosevelt. <laughs> Do you think it, you'll ever go back to the Les Paul being your main axe? Oh, at some point, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because you go through phases, man. That, yeah. I, that, that's the thing. I was really scared that my, my SG phase wasn't going to end. And then it, and then it did. And, uh, here, you know, here, here we are. But that just gives me hope. It's like, oh, wow. It really doesn't matter. I want to get a fretless, man. I want to get a, a fretless bass and uh, put some flat wounds on it. Right. And um, I, I feel like that's got kind of the next challenge for me musically with the bass. Because, like, I can fucking play that P bass all day long backwards and forwards. But I just don't feel cre- creative right now musically. Like I don't, ha- I don't have any creativity currently. And then, I, then just express yourself. You know, if you, if you, when you feel the need to, you will. When you feel the need to, man, you will. Like, you, like you're gonna express whatever that emotion is in you right now, whether it be like a depression or a anxiety or or something like it, it. You just gotta like, one of the best lessons I ever heard from somebody, man, was. Um, you know, if if you're trying to write, um, just put pen to paper and just start writing your thoughts. And as you start writing your thoughts, man, like you know, it might lead to like a poetic, you know, thing or something. But it, it's gonna lead to something. Like you just you just gotta you just gotta do it, man. There's been a couple of weeks where I'm like, man, I don't want to touch a guitar, man. It felt really, you know, I felt cowardly. I felt like I was letting myself down. I felt like I was letting music down most of all. And um, but you just gotta remember this, like. It's, it's all in good fun, right? Like it's and you just gotta you just gotta start. Like the hardest part of anything, any project, any moment, any it's just started. Yeah. Like starting though. Well, there's something to be said for just fucking doing. You know what I mean? I think yeah. a lot of people they they attribute some mystical quality to everything, which there should be around music to a certain degree, but it's also you just got to figure it the fuck out. Like, now, I mean, we've been doing this for a minute, Isaac. You know what I mean? We're, n- we're not masters of the craft yet, but we're not fucking apprentices anymore either. We're at 714, you know? 714, yeah, dude. Yeah, man, we're in that 714 stage. F- free uh, free, uh, free beer and, uh, and chicken. Yeah, yeah, no, J- John Lee Hooker. Till death do us part, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, th- I think that's an important concept, man, because, like, until I was really hot on that shit, I think, right around this time last year, when we started playing together. Cause yeah. Because it, it was a huge realization for me. It was like, you know, I've been, I, the, the 713 mindset being, like, okay, you know, we're uh, trying to get good at something, you know, trying to figure out what it means to get good at something, but, like, 
oh, I know I ain't fucking good enough. You know, and you can stay in that mindset till the day you fucking die, and you will always not be good enough because you have that mindset. No matter how good you are, man, you will not you will not ever have the opportunity or ability to shine until you um decide that you are worthy of what you're working towards. And then you know that that's kind of when the seven fourteen comes in. It's like yeah, like yeah, bitch, I, like I, like as a guitar player, like bitch, I'm good enough, but like. I, 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 you know, 715, like, son, like, you know, I just, I, I know that I'm good enough. Like, you put a challenge in front of me, like, I will, I will attack it within the best of my abilities. I'm humble. I will learn the tools that I need to, to do that. Like, I, I have, I have demonstrated that to myself time and time again. And, you know, m- music is the most important thing to me, like, you know, hands down. And, like, but, you know, I, it's, it's, it's not an arrogance thing, you know, knowing that you're good enough. It's just, you know, you have to know that you're good enough in order to, you know, continue to the next level. You know, if you get to 715, man, you know, you're like fucking, you know, you're like George Clinton, man, or you're like fucking Gandhi or some shit. You know what I mean? You respect a medium, you know, you're fucking that Da Vinci's. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. It's what we're trying to reach, dude. It, 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 yeah. It's a never ending pursuit. It's a, a never ending yeah. spiritual journey. And right now, I feel like I'm in a relationship with music but we're also we ain't fucking right now we're not kissing we don't sleep in the same bed every night um we're just we're barely on speaking terms we're just kind of both there in the room together and th- there's music that I listen to of course that still gets me excited and I'm like fuck I got uh way back into Steely Dan a couple weeks ago yeah, yeah, yeah. Steely Dan always fucking does it for me, man. You know? Do you know the song "Signing Stranger"? I don't know that song. What, what that, album is on? That's on um the Royal Scam. Won't you sign in, stranger? Oh yeah. yeah. The the Royal Scam actually might be my favorite Steely Dan album. You know what? I I think it might be mine. Yeah, it, the Caves of Altamira are is like my favorite Steely Dan song. I would probably say for me on that album, I really like the Fez. Oh yeah, dude, oh. without your fez on. Yeah, honestly, dude, when I, every time I hear it, it does make me think of the Weird Sisters. What? Yeah, <laughs> the Fez. Uh, yeah, the Fez, because that seems like something that you guys would play and you would think is is funny. Dude, that's that's a high compliment. Yeah, that's a high compliment, dude. I love I love that song. That that album that album's brilliant, dude. I mean, F- Steely Dan is brilliant, dude. And I've been really um digging on uh jeff skunk baxter as a guitar player that dude is cool yeah he's good he's like a defense contractor now or some shit he doesn't what he he just does music for fun um like he still plays gigs and does shit and does albums but he he works as like a defense contractor for the government or some oh, shit. Stop smoking weed then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. No, the, th- that was when I was a kid, man. I flip over the album and I was just like, who is this dude? And he he looked like he's, he just smoked all the weed in Mexico. Like <laughs> Every time you look at him. <laughs> yeah, I got um super into, uh, what's his name, the bass player, listening to interviews with him. He plays uh, on that particular record or do they have a steady bass player? Um, so Walter Becker in the early years played bass for the most part. Really? But eventually they brought in Chuck Rainey. That's who I'm thinking of. Chuck Rainey. Who else did he play with? He's played with Aretha Franklin. He's played with everybody, dude. Like his list, go- he's King Curtis. Like the list is deep. He played with King Curtis. He played with King Curtis. Is he on that live at the Fillmore album? I think he might be. I I literally listened to that the other. King Curtis is my favorite horn player. Period. Um, and it's weird because I I threw on a Coasters record the other day. I had no idea that all those insanely classic um saxophone parts. That's King Curtis in the Coasters. Oh shit! Yeah, I didn't know that the Coasters got they got some songs, man. They're amazing. Um, but but have, have you listened to that live at the Fillmore record? Um. I've listened to some King Curtis live records, but to be truthful, I don't know which ones they were. Oh, that's that's fine, man. You should check this out, though. It's King Curtis live at the Fillmore West, I believe, um, 1968. It's right after he did the record King Size Soul, which is, like, the sickest record ever. Um, 
but it's Bernard Purdy on the drums. Oh shit. Billy Preston on the organ, and I think it's Chuck Rainey on the bass. Man. Yeah. Yeah. That would make sense. Yeah, it's a great band, dude. Yeah, I mean, just just fucking killers, man. And it, it was interesting to kind of like listen to Chuck Rainey talk about what the music scene was like in New York then. You know what I mean? Um, just hearing him fucking talk about what it was like to to gig and how he would he would go on the road, but it would only be for weekend dates, and he would be like, "I need to be back on Monday in New York so I can do session work." Because he was just straight session work. Oh, so he was like a nine to five type. Yeah, yeah. Which is perfect. It sounds perfect to me. Uh, no, that's dude. I do not know why that's not your your whole existence. That's but, what I'd like it to be. Yeah. I mean, r- right now, You're perfect for it. You bred for it, man. Yeah, I I really feel like I am, and as far as playing with people, I can. With most things that are like rock air quotes i can do that but th- there's just not a music industry anymore like there was like the only lateral move would be me trying to start playing on country records like when they're fucking doing 20 songs a day at blackbird with with one producer and th- it's like okay the first three are blake shelton the next two are so and so and then the next uh whatever and i just don't know like i i don't give a fuck about that music it doesn't make me feel anything you know what i mean yeah unfortunately it's like dude we're in the pop music from like 50 years ago yeah that's that's the thing it was yeah. like yeah yeah can you imagine being a top 40 session player like you know in 1965 or something oh dude that's yeah. the dream look at this shit that's the dream you you hear all these stories from players back in the day like carol k man uh i, I feel like people don't talk about her enough because like i would say my big five for bass players jamerson of course duck dunn of course carol k george porter jr and then chuck rainey wow all flat wound players by the way thank you for turning me on to the flat wounds oh Berman. dude it's uh, flat wounds or go fuck your mother exactly i just i don't i mean th- there there are things Round wounds are good for absolutely. I'm I'm not gonna argue against that, but there's so much round wound propaganda. I feel like I feel like so many players in town. Like how many players do you know in the East Nashville scene that play flat wounds? Uh, yeah, too many, man. Like um, I'm that play flat wounds or round wounds. Well, the dudes that I fuck with that are in my folds that. Or like you know, I'm making music with flatwounds. Flatwounds, like that's kind of one of the things where I'm like, if you know what's up, you're playing flatwounds. If yeah. you like, you if you know what's up, like that's that's just that's a very specific, that's a very specific flattering tone. Yeah, yeah. And then if you're into round wounds, you could be in all sorts of other bullshit that I'm not really trying to fuck with myself sonically. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, I just feel like round wound players for the most part they want to slap and pop too much which slapping and popping is okay and in context chuck rainey slapped and popped he slapped and popped on some of the steely dan stuff but uh everybody is just constantly jerking off over flea and les claypool and maynard james keenan who are all great players. Yeah, but they're very acrobatic, and it's like they only fit in their various... They, 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 they're, they got their own funk, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they, they're funking in their own... like Highly specialized. Thing. Highly specialized. Which there's nothing wrong with that. They found their thing. More I don't want any you. of those guys in my band ever. Yeah, exactly. I don't. like Because they, they got so much a signature thing. It's like, you know, I'd have to, you know... It just it, it doesn't work with my it doesn't work with my flavor, man. It's like you know it's it's like when people put ketchup in the mayo, dude. I want to start like, like I don't fu- I don't you... fuck with mayonnaise, dude. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Do you too? Yeah, you don't fuck with mayonnaise either. Oh my god, we've bonded further. Yeah, I don't fuck with mayonnaise. I don't fuck with ranch. We damn northeast boys, bro. We vinegar and blue cheese, dude. I you know you know what I don't I don't fuck with people who fucking eat their their pizza with ranch. <laughs> I've done it, but I'm kind of a hoe. I just, well, I'm gonna pretend you didn't say it. Nah, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a dude. I'm, I'm a friendly hoe. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm a little, I'm gonna look past it, dude. I'm a but slut. 
look, it's already pizza. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's already pizza. Is that not enough for you? Even if it's bad pizza. That's my whole thing with it. It's 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 we're so fucking gluttonous as Americans. It's like it's it's already perfect even when it's bad. I completely agree. See, like now if I'm going to implement the the ranch, let me just tell you this right now. The pizza is probably 2 days old been sitting in my glove box. <laughs> I, w- I believe that. I 100% believe that. And there's n- there's no barbecue sauce, teriyaki. Like, there's no, there's, no, there's no other thing. No, like, Frank's Red Hot or nothing like that. It's like, I got dipping in something just in order to ingest it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, might yeah. as well. Yeah, you might as well. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm dipping in a ranch. But, like, dude, that's what makes me a slut. Those fundamental moments, dude. You know, when I go against my own code, dude, when I go against my creed, I know I'm not supposed to eat ranch. I don't like it, dude, but it gets it down, man. I don't go against my fucking creed ever, dude. I I make I make a stand, and I, I never go back on it. Dude, that's what I like about you, actually. You're very, Taylor, you're a very real, honest motherfucker. You Thanks, always, man. No, for real. You astound me with that type, because, like, Man, there is never an opinion that you back down from. Like when you don't fuck with somebody, it's 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 arm's length, arm's length, buddy. Well, here's here's the other thing. When it comes to people, I'm willing to give people another shot if I've sensed that they've changed in some way. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like anybody that I don't fuck with, I just one, if if I've gotten to the point to where I don't fuck with you, it's that that I've seen something, and this this all sounds very judgmental, I know, but I, I I've made the assessment in my own mind that I feel like someone it's someone who lacks character in some way. Yeah. Like you you know all the people that I that I don't fuck with and that I don't like, and um like you know who I'm I'm speaking of. Yeah. yeah. Um, and any of the people that I don't fuck with and I don't like, I feel like it's because. They lack fucking character. And it's beneath me to even talk to them. Yeah. Um, damn, man. You know, you were trying not to sound judgmental. You made, I know. Yeah, it's you made judgmental. It so, you made it so much worse. But it's, but it's okay to be judgmental sometimes, man, because if you don't have good judgment, you know. It took me a long time to get good judgment, especially, um, like, Nashville taught me that shit, for sure. I just... Just, just working with so many people that um, only have their interests in mind that don't, you know, have, like don't have those core values of like you know unity or uh just 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 fucking assholes man there's so many assholes around here well stuck up weirdos yeah what i what i think it is for me uh, truthfully i think i'm i'm very um idealistic you know what i mean and i i feel like if someone has said or done something that's altered, not altered, but has some somewhat dashed my idealism. Then, um, or it's not even idealism, but it's just like I I feel like I try and operate in a very honest way, and I just try and be real with people. And if they're not willing to give that back to me, I don't I don't fuck with them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you can just feel it. You can sense it, man. It's just like when when it's not being reciprocated. And I, I mean, may, maybe like there's a time and place for that. And maybe there's circles that I just can't get in. And there's probably a lot of people that I bump into, man. And it's like, man, I don't get that motherfucker, man. Like he's just like, it's when you're just not like, you know, you don't have that type of resonance with somebody, or somebody doesn't feel comfortable being honest with you, or I don't feel comfortable being honest with somebody else, like. Maybe that, or maybe I'm too honest for some people, or maybe I'm not honest enough for other people. Like, I often wonder about that, man. And it's just like, if there is some type of way to like, you know, unify all that type of stuff, but there really isn't. It's it's just different strokes for different folks at the end of the day, and it's you got to be, you, and you got to be like kind of territorial of like your zone, don't you think? Uh, I would say of your zone and of your zen, dude. Yeah. I've been very conscious this year because after the our house, you know, flooded, blew up, that whole thing went out the window. That fucking sucked. Um, when when we lost our house, uh, we you know, we moved into the new spot. Um, you know, Gabrielle threw that little little 
little birthday bash for me. I really wasn't involved in that, but it was like I saw a lot of the people that I cared most about um, that night, and uh, that was pretty much most of their first time being to my house, and it was really rad to not have so many people coming and going coming and going from my home this entire year that's that's given me a peace of mind that i didn't know that i i needed because the last five years living at the old spot everybody knew where you lived everybody knew where i lived man and i loved that man and there was always like you know a couple weeks to go by and there'd be another band coming in town who's gonna stay at my house i always had i had always had like i always had people crashing my house i loved that i always thought it was happy to ha- lend a helping hand and have bands come through and stuff and i can still do that but the whole last year i really was only like if if we're playing music together um and like you know a few a few friends or something and it's not like i'm being choosy or nothing it's just i've just really been valuing my my peace of mind i didn't i didn't know i needed that type of stuff man you know i'm a year older now <laughs> yeah well it, it's it's like sometimes uh, something just kind of has to happen in order for you to be able to appreciate it, and some time has to pass. Yeah. Well, I mean, I spent the most of the year, like, kind of telling everyone I've ever met to fuck off so I can get back to a spot where we can record. Because we we really were gearing up to finish a lot of music, and it took me, like, six months to set up a studio. And I was... I was finally at a point now where i'm working in it and getting a lot of shit done where can people find you at isaac yeah you've been trying to i've been watching you yawn i've been knowing you dude i gotta i gotta go to fucking bed yeah okay um people can find me obviously at at isaac short instagram um and (laughs) (laughs) um and at the underscore weird sisters the weird sisters band.com and uh I'd give you my address, but uh, you'd never leave. <laughs> well, I guess I'll see you guys next week. Thank you for listening. Uh, this episode is heavily edited. I had to edit a lot of shit out that we talked about or did. Um, not talked about, but some of those prank calls that we made. Not all of them were that good. Not, yeah, some of them just weren't funny, so I got I got rid of some of them. But, um, yeah, here is a uh, Halloween by Brendan Benson. See you next week. <laughs>